over there. Because yeah, the, yeah, yeah, because they feel it's them, mm -hmm. isn't it? Very good, exactly. Because if you've detached it from yourself, there's more hope now of of you doing something to that periphery, like a mouse on a computer. It can be plugged out, can be yeah, put back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So these are peripheries. I guess if you if you see yourself similarly like a like a computer and these things are just being plugged in mm. a usb is plugged in then you can plug it you, you can mm. safely remove it and and that sort of thing which is very good and also you've linked it to uh, having some sort of code because joe that's exactly what religion is mm. yeah i used to be really like atheist you know i was like oh f religion and all this and then i realized i started looking at the world around me and i was like well look wh where's our values what's there's that there's a reason why there's these been these religions for such a long time because it, it works yeah we need it without a doubt yeah 100 mm. percent. even when you look at the studies mm. yeah th there's a study by timothy uh, Timothy B. Smith. Okay. There's another study by Brian Johnson. In fact, they've compiled over 200 studies to show that if a person adopts a religion, they have less depression, less dependent on drugs, less suicide, more generosity. So these are studies, not just of one paper, two paper, hundreds of, of studies compiled together to reach these conclusions. Yeah, so we've, all, of course, established that you know what? We do need religion. Yeah. Yeah. Without religion, it's like, you know, when you uh, get these flat packs from IKEA to build a shelf. Yeah. It's like not having the, the, the guidelines to build exactly. up. Or it's like going to the gym and not having like a, yeah. a you know, like a plan, like yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah. I, remember, I remember the first time I went to the gym, yeah. where you should have seen me. <laughs> <laughs> I was flipping all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Then I had to use the machines. Exactly. I had to, in the end, I had to look at the the, the little sticker yeah, they've yeah. got on the machine. Be like, okay, that works my triceps. Yeah. And then just doing it, bro, I look like a mug, an absolute yeah, class yeah. A mug. And then, so you've got instructions there. Mm. They were a blessing in disguise. Then I started looking at other people. Then Ali came and he was like, look, I'll meet you once a week. I'll show you how to do it. Mm. Get a plan, blah, blah, blah. So that same logic, yeah, if you like fit in with religion, yeah, you got the book, yeah, which is the instruction manual. Then you've got the prophets, and the prophets are an example, yeah. So sometimes, you know, like I'm, I'm seeing something on the IKEA, you know, flat pack, and I'm like, what? How do I put that screw there? Like, I, I, yeah, I don't well, I missed know. A, I missed a step. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If someone's there going, uh, 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 no, no, put that one over there. Okay, now, now you're gonna need two people. Bring that person in. Right. It's so helpful. Because it's like it gives you having like some kind of uh, like a, a source of guidance personified. It helps, doesn't it? Hundred percent. Because if you're just getting guide from some kind of empty non-entity then it's, it's, it, you're not going to take reverence from the advice that you, you get given. All right, Joe, now you tell me, mm. out of the holy books that are there, from mm. the Abrahamic faiths, from the, from the faiths that have the highest adherence, mm. yeah, which book do you think that the claimants, the adherents, mm. claim it has not been changed even a dot? Well, I mean, we, definitely not the Bible because King James, he messed that one up, didn't he? <laughs> but I, one thing I will say, I would like to be able to, if I do enter religion, I would like it to be not so conclusive to one one faith. Like, I would like to do, but I, you, you may not agree with that. You may be on this kind of thing, but you, you have to choose a specific path and a specific set of guidelines. But what I would love to be able to do is extrapolate what I like the most from all different religions and then just kind of like synthesize my own ideology joe that's that's a very um that's a very clever thing mm. in fact it's so clever that god's done it for us <laughs> <laughs> okay in, in what in um in the yeah. form of the quran yeah because think about it joe you had i mean if you if we were to rank the three abrahamic religions yeah you had Moses who came first, yeah, yeah out of the three uh, Abrahamic religions, and Moses bought the Torah, also known as the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. I'm which half was, Jewish, so I know about that. Yeah, there you yeah. go, there yeah, you yeah. go. So that was relevant for that time. Mm. Then, as you've acknowledged that the Bible was changed, yeah, including the Old Testament. 
So you know now that it's not fair for the people that are going to come after that. Mm. And plus that Bible now is not necessarily relevant because humanity has moved forward 500 to 1000 years. Then we got Jesus here. Yeah? God sent Jesus with the New Testament. Mm. Yeah, updated guidelines. Yeah, and again with another prophet to show us what to do. Thereafter, yeah, after Jesus, we believe Jesus was raised. He didn't die. He wasn't disgraced like people claim he was. He was raised to the heavens and will be sent again. As do all three Abrahamic faiths. And then after he left, then we know that the Bible was changed. You can check John chapter 7, verse 53, right oh, at the it bottom. Got changed a lot. Yeah. It got changed a in lot. fact, even yeah. in the printed in the printed versions mm. at the bottom, it says this was added by a scribe. Yeah. Yeah. It tells you at the bottom. In the preface, it says it's no secret. People yeah. know it's been like new editions have come. Exactly. It's, it, like that, that, the Bible is very old, you know what I mean? So it's been changed a lot. And, exactly. And then, of course, there was uh, then there was Prophet Muhammad, and that was just like I think that was. What, but the think about it though. Of the medieval times, wasn't it? But but think about it, Joe. Jesus himself says, "I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel." Mm -hmm. Yeah. He spoke their language. He he continued the law of Moses. So uh, Jesus didn't claim to come for everybody. Yeah. Mm. However, then of course, when Jesus was raised and the Bible got changed, then God sent the final testament, mm. which encapsulated all of the previous books. Right. Right. Because if you look at the six themes of the Quran, they are themes that are covered in the previous books also. Mm. Yeah. In fact, if you look at the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, mm. yeah, they are even being unraveled today. Yeah, there's certain prophecies that I'm going to tell you are going to be like, oh, damn, he said that 1400 years ago, he said that. Yeah. I'm going to be like, yeah, he did. Yeah, so no other prophet claimed I am for everyone. But do you feel that like literally there's no validity in other interpretations of the of the Lord? That's a good question, but I'd, I'd frame it like this. When you were seven years old and you had a jumper, mm. yeah, that jumper fitted you. It did the job for you. Right. Yeah. Now that you're, you grew up to 11, 12, yeah, you needed another jumper. Mm. This, was, this needed to be a bit bigger. Maybe your moving area is a bit thicker. Mm. If somebody says, what about this jumper? It doesn't mean it's wrong. But I kind of feel that that's the same case with uh, religion now as well. I think that there needs to be some kind of reform, like an, a re-established, because like, no disrespect to the Quran, but it's kind of outdated in, in certain ways as well, in my opinion. Um, and I think that we need some kind of new interpretation that's like uh, an amalgamation of all of these these great this great information that, that comes from. All, what do you feel is outdated? Well, I mean, things things that were relevant then don't seem to be relevant now. But at the same time, I think that like like what. Like, um, I don't, no, no, we're getting into a debate. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, Joe, mm. I, look, I'm not here to convert you. Mm. I'm not here to trip you up. Yeah, no, no, um, no. Uh, even if you check my YouTube channel, mm. it's I do banter. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah. of a laugh. Yeah, well, look, I cover current affairs, but mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not that type. Yeah, okay. If you feel it gets a bit uncomfortable, bro, you can walk away whenever you no, want. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. No, no. And no, I don't want to step on anyone's no, 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 Joe, Joe, This but, is my first day here, isn't it? Nah, <laughs> but Joe, think of it like this, yeah? I'm telling you mm. that there is one path, there's one book, there's one prophet. Mm. I'm making the claims that mm. this is the path, not only for you, for me, for the whole of mankind. Mm. I should be able to take a few questions that you send my way. Yeah, yeah, I should course, be able to withstand course. certain, you know, um, bitter pills if mm. I'm making such a big claim. In fact, I, I would say it's your right mm, to ask me and That's I'm the not great thing get... about discourse, isn't it? Yeah. This is what it's all about. You just like exchange ideas. Yeah, and, and, like, Bro, yeah I'm not. I'm not yeah. like that. That oh, <laughs> why did you say? No, say what you yeah. want, but say it's it. It's kind of yeah. difficult because like I was going to think of it, one example like oh why why is it like the rule of women need to cover up and stuff like that, but then then there's another part of me that's thinking well look what's going on with like a lot of the with, with, with culture at the moment with the over sexualizing of women, and so like there's this with every single point that I make, there's always some that I, I already can hear the rebuttal back to it. So I'm definitely, I would say that I'm conflicted in my views about these things. And I definitely haven't given it as much time as you have to like really 
you know, I suppose I put a lot of my, my, my thought process into my writing of my lyrics, so a lot of the thought process goes into recording the feelings into that, do you know what I mean? But like, you definitely, you know Maybe I mean? do that then, make a, make a few tracks. Mm, I am, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing that at the moment, yeah, yeah. Even, uh, what's... Um... I'd love to show you my rap at some point. Yeah. No, I'd love to hear it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear it. There's a, a lot of these um, uh, famous artists in, in history, mm. they, they did put a lot of kind of their, their, their feelings and emotions. And if that's something that works for mm. you, then use that as a medium to kind of get your thoughts yeah, out definitely. there. But Joe, going back to that point where you said, does that mean that Christianity is, is false? Or does it mean that, you know, um, we, we can't take from those? It's like a jumper, a yeah. five-year-old, and then you've got an 11 year old. Yeah. Now, you don't say that jumper is wrong. You say it's, I've grown out of it, it's yeah. outdated. And then now you might be wearing this Yankees jacket, but you know, to a seven year old, he's not gonna appreciate a Yankees yeah, jacket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're so, saying that like, it was valid at the time and it was needed at that point, yeah. but then we need to move on to something new. Yeah. I'm saying that Islam now, because there was no prophet to come after Prophet Muhammad. Mm. Therefore, Islam is now something which is a guideline till the end of time. Right, right, right. Like it encapsulated, it, it, it encapsulates every lifestyle choice, it encapsulates any issue that a person's going to have, it encapsulates above and beyond what we even know. Mm. And sometimes, this is, this is what's remarkable that, that if you look at the Quran, the exegesis, yeah, the um, commentary of the Quran, there's, there's so many things you can extrapolate from it. Mm. There, there's so many solutions. Mm. For example, the Quran, yeah, the, or the sayings of the Prophet, he even tells us effectively on how to go to the toilet, yeah, how to eat properly, how right. to sleep, yeah, how to, uh, you oh, know. It's very specific. It's very, right, very right, okay. specific because mm. think about it. I've never read it. Mm. Yeah, because think about it, like even sleeping, like w when you go to sleep, sleep on your right side. Mm. Yeah, and then we know logically our hearts on our left side. So if we're sleeping on our left side, we're putting weight. Yeah, a drink in three gulps. The Prophet peace be upon him said, drink in three gulps. Okay. Unlike the drinking of a camel. Yeah, and then now the scientists tell us that if you drink all in one go, then it puts a strain on your visceral organs. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And when you when you go to the toilet, sit down and go to the toilet. Because if you sit down, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're squeezing your, your bladder. So if you sit down, you, you make a kind of... Um, you, you, your, 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 your lower part of your stomach joins with the top part of your leg. You and your, your digestive system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your bladder. And then all the urine comes out properly. So there's less chance of a UTI for women or, you know, a... Um, I don't want to get like technical, but a certain, certain thing gets blocked up. Yeah. Right, right, right. Especially if a woman's pregnant or whatnot. Or when she's going through a cycle. And it's the same with a man also. Yeah. You don't want to be standing up and then, you know, a few drips and drabs, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. aftershock. So you get, you get like, it's very specific what I'm hearing. Look, there's like specific guidelines, but unlike with the Bible where it's like, you can extract knowledge if you interpret it the right way. This is one of the things that really got me into reading the Bible, was uh, reading Cain and Abel. It's like one paragraph and it talks about Cain and Abel and it talks about one brother who's willing to make sacrifices to God and another one who does it half-heartedly. And like, I started to realize that you could, you could think about sacrifice, not just literally giving a sacrifice to God, but sacrifices you make in life. Yes. And I, I started to realize that like Cain could be compared to like one of my layabout friends who's not doing anything with his life and he's getting jealous. So he, he, he makes life difficult for other people around him. So when I started to see that through these stories, you can apply it to your own life. Then that's when I, that's when I started to realize, no, nah, there's something to this. And then I started to read Frederick Nietzsche. I started to look around, like look around and look at what's on on YouTube and like social media and how secular things have become. Like, and I've, I'm totally with you, man, without a doubt. Wh whether it's going to be Islam for me or if it's going to be Christianity, I'm not sure yet. But I've, got, I've definitely got to do a lot of thinking. Man. What's mm. interesting about Frederick uh, Nietzsche mm. is. He, he's got that famous quote, isn't it? God, we killed God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that God is dead. Yeah, yeah. But then there's a, another good quote by... But he didn't say that in jubilation. He, yeah. didn't, he wasn't happy about it. 
CJ CJ Chesterton mm. gives a, a good kind of uh, exegesis or explanation of that. Mm. He says God being dead doesn't mean that man won't believe in anything. Mm. It means that man will believe in anything. Yes, that's it. That's it. And that what he predicted, Frederick Nietzsche anyway, is that we would turn into narcissists. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening right now. It's you look scary. at liberalism. Mm. With liberalism, the goalposts are constantly changing. Yeah. In fact, uh, even if you look at um, the, the founder of, um, of utilitarianism, mm. yeah, it's based on the, let's face it, the liberalism principle, the, the crux of liberalism is based on the, the weight of pleasure and pain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if pleasure outweighs pain, then it's good. Mm. If it's vice versa, then it's bad. Mm. Yeah, and, but religion transcends that. Yeah, it says yeah. you're not doing things and you shouldn't do things just for pleasure. In yeah. fact, as Muslims, we have something called uh, niya or intention, which is you do something only for God. Yeah. yeah? So that's, this, the, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Because it's like it gives you an opportunity to worship something higher than you. Like something, there's, there's got to be something that you're divisible towards. Wicked. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because if you're just, if you're just doing it, living life for yourself, then you just become a narcissist, basically. And that's what's Pretty going much. on around us. We're yeah. seeing this, I mean, have you seen the new Batman? No, I haven't, no, no. It, the trailer's come out. Yeah. Uh, but DC is known for making very dark movies uh, yeah. when it comes to their characters. But, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see how certain reboots are becoming more darker. Certain yeah, yeah. people that were once Dis used by Disney, like mm. teenagers and making these little shows, have suddenly become very dark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of fits in with how you're saying the trajectory that a godless society is taking. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a case and I'm going to tell you uh, what makes Islam unique from, say, Christianity and the other okay. faiths. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the first thing, of course, Islam claims that the Quran hasn't been changed. Yeah, it's the only one that makes that claim that it is the word of God. Yeah, yeah? literally the word of yeah, God. Yeah, I remember Muhammad telling me this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and somebody might say, yeah, but I mean, you're making that claim. Mm. No, we have manuscripts which can be dated right. to the time that it was compiled. Mm. Yeah. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but it's probably like in one of your Muslim countries, isn't it? Like Saudi or you know over right, there. Right, right, yeah. But Joe, I'll, I'll, I will tell you that it's in this country. Mm -hmm. Birmingham University mm. holds one of the oldest manuscripts of the Quran. Mm. Christianity, Judaism doesn't make this claim that they have manuscripts dating to the time mm. of their quote unquote founders, although we don't believe. Uh, so it hasn't founders. been corrupted by reinterpretations and yeah. Exactly. Mm. And also, Joe, when you look at Christianity, it depends. You ask a Christian, what do you believe about God? Some mm. will believe in the Trinity. Yeah. Some will believe There's that. Different factions yeah. of, of the Some will religion, believe yeah. Jesus is the Son of God. Some mm. will believe he's a prophet. This is a fundamental of faith. Mm. You ask a Muslim. Yes, we may disagree about other things, mm. but our fundamental creed. You ask any Muslim, mm. five-year-old, ten-year-old, twenty-year-old, fifty-year-old, Somali, Lebanese, mm. you know, French. They will all say, "We believe God is one, and we believe the final prophet is Prophet Muhammad." Right, right, right. Fr French accent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get uh, any Muslim saying that. Mm. When you say, oh, you French Muslim, what Quran do you believe? I believe in the same Quran. Mm. You ask a German, I believe in the same Quran. Yeah, yeah you ask a Chinese person, uh, my so Chinese it's accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. They yeah. all believe in the same Quran. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you ask yourself, then Joe, if I was to believe in a religion, uh, if I was to believe in a religion, surely the scripture that has been sent, mm. because it's been sent by God, surely he should be able to look after it, isn't it? Right, I see, I get your point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like Harry Potter, if somebody starts adding like uh, Harry Potter mm. went to Hogwarts, Harry Potter met Hermione, then Harry Potter it, smoked some pot. One thing I will say though, right, is like, even though that that original text hasn't been corrupted, right? It's still, and this is a case with all religions, it doesn't change the fact that people have used that your religion and other religions 
in corrupting ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, of and course. It gets into, it get, and we, you know, that's obvious. We know that. So I'm not like take, making it as like the as, as my claim to not get into religion, but it doesn't okay. render your point obsolete. But it is notable, you know, that like even though the text may not and that's be how I'm giving it. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving it as a note. Mm. Um, I'm scaffolding the argument. Mm. It's not the only one. No. In fact, even as a side note, a footnote, I would say, and I would reference non-Muslim sources. Yeah, mm. Karen Armstrong has written a book called Fields of Blood. Scott Atrian, Scott Atran, mm -hmm. he's a terrorism expert, mm -hmm. and. Uh, amongst others, yeah, there's a, there's uh, two others. Their names have skipped my head. Uh, something more, um, okay. yeah, and they're of the opinion that, in fact, let me put that on ice. Put that on ice. Yeah, let me put that on ice. MI5. Let's deal with the country that we're in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. MI5 in a 2008 report. Do you mind if I smoke, by the way? No, no, go for it. Go for it. Just do, do, do <laughs> like the the side flex. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, yeah, Scott Atran. <laughs> That's what I think of Scott Atran. No, no, no. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, so uh, MI5, they said that the people that are conducting these attacks, mm. these people, they don't practice their faith. They have a very basic understanding of their faith. Um, and oh, who are they talking about? Sorry? They're talking about extremists. Oh, extreme, right, right, right. Extremists, yeah. yeah. And then if we look at Scott Atran and Karen Armstrong, they're, well, Karen Armstrong's of the opinion that most of these attacks done by whichever religion, mm. the, these are done mostly for geopolitical reasons. Yeah, yeah, Scott Atron also says that the motivation for these people isn't usually religion. Yeah, mm. these are experts. They've written They'll literature. They'll rationalize it as something spiritual to it's, kind of it's used, to bring it? a narrative that's, to make it seem like it's moral. Yeah. This is the one thing I get worried about with religion when it's used for like, you know, for political purposes or like used as a kind of like, um, it's predicated on something spiritual, but really it's just being used for their own, for someone's own gain. You know but Joe, I mean? that happens all the time. Of course, no, no. You know, any death that not we- Not just religion though. If you look at what's going on now with coronavirus, that's not religion, that's science doing the exact same thing. So this is one thing I say to people, they say, oh, religion, look what it does, it just corrupts people. Look, human beings will do that no matter what. They mm. use football, football gets used. Yeah, you know, certain countries are buying certain clubs yeah. for whatever reasons. Mm. You'll get certain events being used. Certain charities get used. In fact, the British, when they used the uh, East India Company, yeah, to go there to go to India for trade, and then ultimately uh, they they took over. Yeah, but the point is, anything can be used. But just because it gets used, if, for example, Joe, if if a country says class A drugs are wrong, mm -hmm. yeah, but somebody does a class A drug. And they die. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna blame the country? Or are you gonna blame the person? Blame the person. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like religion doesn't condone these things. Mm. However, if you look, for example, I'll just give you three things mm. to research. Yeah. One's a Sykes Pico treaty. Or Sykes Pico. Sykes Pico. Sykes Pico. Sykes-Picot. Okay. Yeah. Right, so right. when you get home, check it up. Right. Sykes-Picot is when the Ottoman Empire, which is an empire of Muslims, yeah, uh, when that collapsed, the British, the French, and I think it was the Russians. It, it collapsed in World War One, didn't it? Uh, World War Two. World War Two. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a long. That Pretty was a big empire from Turkey, wasn't it? It yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened was the uh, the. The Middle East literally got carved up. You take this, you take that, we take this, we take that. Yeah. And then if you look at the Berlin Conference, Africa, it was similarly Europe. They, they call it like there's a picture in one of the newspapers. Africa's depicted as a cake and you've got these leaders just taking a slice. Yeah. And now if you look certain wars that have been happening in Africa for a very long time, yeah, it's because there's dispute about the borders that have been literally drawn on. We'll take this, all right, you guys take it. Even Belgium, <laughs> who, were, who were the weakest, they came and they got a portion of it as well. Yeah, so the thing is now the borders that we have, Joe, are actually 
the, a lot a lot of the things that we see nowadays can be traced back to those days right, and yeah. it is and that's why you've got professionals like Karen Armstrong saying look the, these these are linked to geopolitical reasons mm. for example even if you look now Iran why is Iran pissed Afghanistan why is Afghanistan pissed yeah you look at all of these in fact you can name any country and I can link it to a geopolitical thing mm. that happened post World War II post World War II there's a reason, mate. But the thing is, it's difficult to rally people around nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to rally people around something that's already established. Mm. You're doing your job. It's like, it's like Pepsi. Mm. Rather than spending millions of pounds, they just get messy on there. Mm. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of that marketing's already been done on Messi. We stick Messi on there, boom, like he's done half of our job. It's like it's a clever marketing technique. You want, you want to get your country back, or you want to get this political issue. Why not use something that's already established? But then, mate, that's where people then need to think objective. That's where education comes in. You can take liberalism and link it to Napoleonic wars. You can take something like socialism and Marxism, which inherently or on paper seems very simple. Very good, yeah. yeah. But in, in reality, it didn't yeah, work. it didn't. But I get into big arguments with my mum about it because she's like a communist and like she's very like radical left. I'm not saying that I'm right wing at all, but like I try to. And then I think this is my view in general with everything. I try to kind of just say, not really have a, a, a you know a stake in any position and kind of just stay in the centre. Probably like centre left, but I find. What I don't like is when people get too extreme, and this is what we were talking about before, because it always comes down to people will rationalise their actions um, using radical ideologies, basically. And that's what we've yeah. got to be, we've got to be but conscious then, of. But Joe, what we do then, and that's why here, I'm here defending Islam, mm. not the adherence to Islam. No, yeah, yeah. It's like with, with anything, you've got nutcase vegans, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got nutcase meat eaters, yeah. there's nutcases everywhere. Mm. But the thing is, That's the thing. It doesn't just happen with religion, like we were saying before. Like radicalism is happening right now with people with vaccines. You know, with yeah, there you and go. Everything. There That's you not go. religion. That's science, isn't it? So but anything can be dogmatic, and there you go. monolithic. So yeah, yeah. So going back to the argument, number one, my first criteria is the Quran. If we're claiming it's from God, the Quran is the only one that makes the thing. It yeah. hasn't been corrupted. It hasn't been changed. And the the core belief is the same. No matter what sect you follow, one God, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is the final messenger. Mm -hmm. We believe in the prophets, the angels, yeah, billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi, the books, the angels, wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir, the day of judgment, all good and bad is from Allah, destiny, etc, etc. Yeah, we got six articles of faith. Every Muslim will accept this. But when you ask a Christian, yeah, it's different. Like last, uh, last week a Christian was telling me, yeah, the New Testament, do you uh, get into big debates with Christians here? To, to be honest, Joe, with me, I'm not here to... to You're not being combative, yeah. Yeah, right. I'm here because the thing is, I believe the veracity of Islam. And if, if I believe in the veracity of Islam so much, I'm going to let my argument do the talking. Mm. And you've got the people that can make their own decisions. Mm. The thing is, ultimately, Joe, I believe that guidance isn't going to come from me. Mm. I can't change your mind, yeah? And even when you look psychologically, some of our best thinking is done unconsciously. Yeah. yeah? yeah. You let's just say you're high, yeah? Because you know, cigarettes or alcohol or whatever. And the high is wearing off. And I don't know, you're just looking out the window, you're just staring at a tree. Sometimes when you're by yourself you look around. And I believe that if you're sincere, Joe, then our conversation will come to you in a different light at that moment. I'm not just relying on this dialogue. Mm. Yeah, and the thing is, I'm not so arrogant to believe that I can change you mm. or change anybody here. Mm. I believe that the God that I worship, the God whose commands I follow, like I could, it's a Sunday, mate. Mm. Yeah, I'm a handsome guy, I could be out there, I could <laughs> be doing whatever, but I'm here mm. and, I'm, and I'm telling people about this. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get no reward from you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're not paying me, I'm not getting paid by anybody. But it's something that I genuinely believe that if you're, you're depressed or if you lose a loved one or if you're heartbroken, I genuinely believe that Islam will help you in those moments. And I've seen with a lot of people, we have to pick up the pieces. 
Yeah, we have to pick up the pieces. People are upset, they're depressed. And we, after something's happened, we're very reactive. But the Chinese have a good kind of philosophy, which is be proactive. Yeah, preventative medicine. Yeah, just yeah, prevent good stuff from Confucius. Right. Exactly. He was a very clever guy. Yeah. Right. So I'm also saying this that rather than saying, okay, that person's done this, that person's done that, okay, let me undo years of trauma that you've gone through. Why don't I equip you with something that's going to help you the next time you're, you're, you're going through a trauma or you've lost a loved one or whatever it may be? Yeah, it could be, it could be helpful, man. I'm definitely going to like. I, I, I started reading again, so I'm definitely going to read the Quran, but I'm going to have to finalize this conversation. But I wanted to hear, before I go though, like, yeah. get, go through that list. So you got like, the Quran's not being corrupted, yeah. and the second one was... So yeah. the Quran's not being corrupted, yeah. yeah. We can trace it back even by non-Muslim mm. uh, sources. Number two, mm. looking at the veracity of the Prophet, mm. analyze his prophecies. Yeah, there's a very good book. It's a free book. You can get it from that table mm. called Forbidden Prophecies. Yeah, so Forbidden Prophecies goes through prophecies that Nostradamus has made, mm -hmm. the Mayans made, Joseph Smith and the likes. And then it talks about the Prophet Muhammad's uh, prophecies, how they are even unraveling today. Are they relevant for us today? Yeah. And how specific, how on point, how sublime they actually are. So I would say second thing would be the prophecies. Uh, of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The accuracy of how the prophetic accuracy. it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the third that I already mentioned, which was Islam is the only one that if you look, actually gives you a practical uh, instruction, instruction manual. Yeah, specific, yeah? Specific. yeah. how to go to the toilet, how to, uh, how to communicate, yeah, yeah, how to distribute inheritance. So the laws are very specific. It's not shrouded in like, in like, so in analogy, not analogies, narratives that you need to interpret in order to understand it's much more literal in terms of how to live by it. Just say I'm a Christian, I would, mm -hmm. I would question those assumptions. Okay. Look into it by all means, mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. but, but look into it with an open mind because I would dispute the fact okay. that it hasn't been corrupted. Okay. Having done research, I would say that it, there is corruption mm -hmm. within it. So, so be prepared to question as well as look into it. Well, no, but one, one, one point I made is that like, even if something... But do you want to give maybe the evidence for corruption otherwise? Sorry? Do you want to maybe back up your well, claim we did, of... We did discuss yeah, that I, I, earlier, yeah, about like the yeah, fact that interpretations yeah. of anything Which means it can be corrupted. What we mean by corruption, that's what yeah, I mean. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, th so those are a few yeah, things. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, was there... So, yeah, in terms of uh, prophecies, in terms of uh, preservation, in terms of relevance in our lifestyle, uh, in terms of comprehensiveness, uh, in terms of practicality, yeah, the Quran stands head and shoulders and Islam stands head and shoulders uh, above the other religions. Okay. Yeah. So just definitely be just, just worth consider listening. as well that well, I don't have a standpoint yeah, overall. No, sure. like, my my yeah. view is that like I think there's validity in yeah. I don't really have a standpoint. No, so I just want to hear what people have to yeah, say. Yeah, of course, so, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on that you wanna hear what people this has to be the most softly spoken group ever can you guys <laughs> my, my, my son Isa where we're from miles away he was like I can't hear anything that uh, please sorry carry on yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying if, if yes Islam is a noble religion but I would say as a Christian it's not about being religious it's about having relationship with God and that's made possible through what Jesus Christ has done religious people don't go to heaven forgiven people go to heaven and we need to ask where can we find forgiveness and to me as a Christian it's only found at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for us so that that's what I would say and although yes look into it everything may seem to have validity Jesus has a picture of a broad road that leads to destruction and alongside it a narrow road which leads to life. And he says few will find it. So it also the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but its end is destruction. So we can be sincere in following something, but sincerely sincerely wrong. So that's why truth is important. That's why it's important to have these discussions. Yeah, I mean, and it's good. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah, man. Yeah. But no, then, I just wish that yeah. I like if I like the idea both ideas. Christianity and Islam. I would like what I want to do is kind of like extrapolate. This is my. This is what I would like to do in my lifetime in terms of my spiritual realization. I want to be able to extract. I know this doesn't work for you guys because you both have this thing. It's like it's like this way or no other way, right? But I want to be able to extrapolate what I like from both 
debate and synthesize my own ideology, basically. But so I get, I, this yeah. is why I'm enjoying listening to both yeah, of you, yeah. so I can, you know, take take on board what you both have to say, and then I will probably, you'll probably see it as a mutation, but for me it's like my, my own truth, you know? But Joe, I guess one thing that I would say is, Quran is a synthesis of all the scriptures and all the prophets that came before anyway. Yeah, yeah, For example, the, yeah, 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 the Quran has a chapter on Mary. Mm. Yeah, it talks about Jesus. It talks about the prophets. Well, it's definitely are, newer than Christianity. It's been, it, it, it started uh, much later on yes, in the medieval yeah. times. Yeah. And Islam, unlike Christianity, uh, 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 of course, I mean, we had a discussion. I don't want to put you in an awkward position where <laughs> he then say something yes. and then I have to yes. give a response yes. to that because yeah, no, then people will, yeah, then people will, will say, oh, how come you didn't respond to that? But I don't want to put, I know you're in an uncomfortable position where <laughs> no, you're cool, trying to be nuanced. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was what we say as Muslims. Of course, there's fundamental differences between Islam and, and Christianity. Like, sorry, what's your name? Yeah, Mark. Mark, yeah. So Mark was saying that, you know, they believe that you have to go through Jesus and Jesus died for everybody's sins, etc. Uh, etc. Et but of course, we do have a counter, but we can maybe discuss uh, after our discussion comes to a conclusion. Um, but yeah. Those are a few things. You can get forbidden prophecies. It's on that table. Get it. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. It's on that it table. Out, yeah. It's free, so just grab I'm that. I'm gonna grab that for sure. Yeah, man. that's definitely worth looking into. You've got the Quran already. It's great. Now that I lost my phone, I'm reading books again. It's great. Yeah. So like, I was glued to my screen, and um, yeah, man, it's pleasure, pleasure meeting you both. Yeah. Man. What was your name again? My name is Zishan. Zishan, yeah. Zishan. And yours is Mark, yeah. yeah? yeah. Joe. Alongside that, yeah. could I give you a gospel of Luke? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And the Luke, for sure. Just say pray. I've, 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 I've been reading like the, the the New Testament, the Old Testament. I mean, like a like, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brother, can you get like, forbidden prophecies story. from that table, so, please? But my viewpoint is that like I don't have a, I don't have like a stance on religion as such, but I, I value it, and I value what you both have to say. You know what I mean? And I know that might sound like I'm an agnostic, but I just want to. Yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, but I want to. I'm going to read that Forbidden Prophecies. I've got the Quran as well. I've got it off um, someone else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So I'm it's, a, it's a really yeah. good book. Yeah. It's a really good oh, book. Right. Check okay. it. Yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. Pleasure to meet you. Nice bro. to meet you, Joe. Yeah, I'll be here. And not next week, maybe the week after next week. Okay. No, yeah, I'm so. definitely going to come uh, very regularly. So I'll probably see you guys again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds man. good. Sounds no good. doubt you guys are going to get into it. <laughs> just a discussion. Just a, yeah, just a discussion, might sharing ideas. I observe yeah. in a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Mark.